Well, good morning, everyone. It is June 21st, 2023, which I guess means summer has officially arrived with the summer solstice today. And let me tell you that I don't know about where you live, but where we live, summer has arrived with a vengeance. It's hot, it's humid, temps next week are supposed to get up in the 100s today just i think in the 90s uh, but our kind of inordinate cool spell i think or unusual cool spell has has definitely decided to retreat and now the full throttle heat of summer has arrived but so far things don't seem to be objecting to it too much so let me kind of point out some things. It's been a while since I've done this kind of walkabout, but there are a number of things I want to point out to you in particular. To date, I was a little bit concerned that these white wedding hydrangeas, I wasn't sure if they could perform in this much sun, but not only are they performing, but they are absolutely spectacular. And remember, this is the first year for them. So I'm going to be doing a roundup of all of the Southern Living plants that are in my garden and how they are performing and have performed thus far. But I wanted to especially point out the hydrangea hedge because these are really, really looking good. And thus far, they are handling the heat. It's interesting. At the end of the day, the foliage will look wilted and droopy from the direct sun and the heat, but the flowers continue to look perky. So it's interesting to me. In the other house, I had them in a bit more shade, but here they are in full sun and they, they're troopers. Let me just say that they really, really are performing well. And I would consider them a stalwart of my garden now and absolutely a must have, probably, um, I mean, every bit as good a performer as like Annabelle and some of the other PG hydrangeas, paniculata hydrangeas that we're familiar with. So the little wildflower area, which consists of Cleome and some Celosia that my friend Gail gave me. She gave me some seed and I planted it earlier in the season. It's, it's really doing exactly what I want it to do. It's not the more refined Rosalita that is a little bit shorter and the bloom is a little bit heavier. This is much more delicate. You can see it kind of waving in the breeze there. It's in pink and white, and I love how statuesque it is. I also love the way there's a great color echo with the pink Cleome, you can see it there, the dark pink against the candy butterfly purple, and then also that Capal uh, phlox in the back. And then with the other plants in Autumn's Edge, I think it really looks beautiful. They look beautiful as a backdrop. And as I had hoped and had intended, they definitely are a draw to the pollinators. And they look, I think, they're just lovely. Look how they wave in the breeze. And they can really, really handle the heat and the full sun. Now let me see if I can get a little bit closer. I'm doing this without Stuart today because one of the things I love about them is how oh, they're just unique flower heads. And I, I love how spidery they are. I love the way these little spikes at first start out curved and folded over. And then they unfold into these sparklery kind of projectiles that come out of the flower. And I just love it. They're very erotic, I think, kind of sensual. 
And then the agapanthus in the back continues to just really, really perform well. But this, this coming week will be the test. It will definitely be the test. Now, I remember doing a video a, a pretty long time ago about sunshine ligustrum and how it's like a lantern for the garden. And look here. I have clipped it a little bit, not real tightly, but enough so that it will thicken up. And it's just like these golden globes that sit in the garden and illuminate whatever is around them. Case in point, this beautiful salvia in the foreground. Now it's about time for its third haircut and I will give it, I will give it that soon. Look at how the gara has thickened up. This started out to just be one gallon plants from Bricks Garden Center. My friend Sean there found them for me and they are thickening up and they are putting on new flower heads which will float beautifully with the other things suspended here like the cone flower. And then I guess I should also show you some of their other friends who are playing in the same area. Look at that, look at that Budlia. What a great ground cover, you guys. What a great blooming ground cover. But what else I wanted to show you was the Celosia. Let me see if I can find it here. Blooming in the same area, and at first I thought it would be a little bit too strident, a little bit too brash. But no, look at how it just beautifully echoes the darker tones in the Cleome. So I'm very happy with it. And I'm happy with the white as well, which is equally as fabulous. Even the next door dog approves. So the Celosia is just, the Cleome just started this past week and the Celosia is getting started now. You can see the white tufts of the white version. And at first I thought, well, maybe I only want the white. But now as, as the summer begins to progress and it gets hotter, I really like these hot tones. And from a distance, they all look beautiful together. Very Monet-like. Now, what else is blooming in the foreground on this Wednesday walkabout? are the sweet, crazy pink cone flowers. These are in the Southern Living Collection. And look how sweet they are. And look, they're low growing and cushiony and compact. Like so many of the things in that collection, they're compact and so I can have these stepping stones here and they're tall enough to hide the stepping stones from a distance and when just looking over at the surface, but nevertheless, they provide a great punch of color. And they're kind of woven through this area. And by the way, it is, I'm not sure exactly what time it is. It's between seven and 7.30. So I really wanted to get out here before it got too hot and the sun came out. Yes, you can see that I've got my hose out. And yes, I do use miracle Grow in my containers, not in the flower beds, but in the containers, I do think that they give um, just a great feed to the container plantings where I'm not so concerned about being organic. Now, what a happy, little occurrence. Look at that. See that little punch of pink right there? That little dot of pink? That is a secondary bloom on that Jane Magnolia that I moved and it is showing no signs of stress from my moving it. And it repeats this wonderful, wonderful tonal pink that is coming out and is really strutting its stuff in the summer, I cannot wait for that kapow flocks to spread and get even larger. I might need to see if, if Sean has some more of that.
And then my little milkweed is there, just waving hello to you. I'm really liking the way Autumn's edge is turning out. I need to do a diagram of that. You can see those other little yellow lanterns there that are illuminating the bed. Those are also sunshine lagustrum. Now let me see if I can work my way. There's the social patio and there's something I wanna show you in that window box. Um, I need to work my way out of this flower bed. It's so fun for me to see kind of a vision realized and all of those cedars, the Cleome and I, I, not much of the Verbena bonariensis germinated. I'm not sure what the deal was. I need to maybe put out some more seed. But this area, the hydrangea hedge area, I just deadheaded a lot of the candy butterfly over here, so I expect a second flush of bloom pretty soon. There's that tuft of lavender veronica. And then echoing the color of the sunshine lagustrum is this Joseph's coat that is beginning to fill out. It loves the heat and it is starting to get larger as it flanks both sides of the walkway. Leading up to the front door on both sides. I might try to dig that up and overwinter it for next year. Look at the better boxwood and how it's starting to grow and fill in together. And those sweet, sweet little boxwood basils. I haven't had to prune them or anything. They have adopted this perfect round globular form all on their own. And I was looking for where I had stashed my boxwood basil seed and I couldn't find it. So I need to locate it so I can plant some more. And there's that great deal on those Cranberry Creek boxwood. I'll see if I if they've got them again. I ordered from another source and it was good, but not quite as good as these original Cranberry Creek boxwoods from, I believe it was Premier Plants. And I have to say, I know some people will think it's a little bit over the top, but I think that these Eugenia topiaries here look stellar and they love where they are being housed right now. They just love it. There's another view of the upper terrace. Very cottagey, very cottage garden. Hopefully Klaus Dalby would approve. I should put a link to his book. I haven't, I, I don't think it's been released yet. I think it's just on pre-order like my garden journal. So here's, Stuart, here's where we need to put a little plug for my garden journal. I really, really wish it was already out. Every day I think, oh, I wish I could record these things in my new garden journal, which I, I wanted to start as I started the garden, but it, it just hadn't been published yet. I was still working on it. So this, there's a couple of things I wanna show you up here. Um, Number one, I'm trying to decide, it's, yes, it's got some weeds coming out of it, which I need to yank. Um, I'm trying to decide if this boxwood is dead or not. And sometimes, this is my question of the day. Tell me, do you sometimes struggle in deciding if a plant is dead or not? I, I have scratched the wood and I wouldn't say it was brown nor green. I'm not really seeing any new growth coming out, but then there have been other times when I've had boxwood that looks like this and it was indeed alive. It just took a long time to establish. Okay, I can hardly stand this, you guys. Let me yank this out. I'll work on it a little bit with a little bit more determination a little bit later. So I'm trying to decide on that. And if it is, I'll just, I'll just replace it. Now, I know there were some naysayers about my window box, but I really do love the way it looks. Now, yes, 
I do think that the peppers are rather overpowering, maybe even more so than the tomatoes, but look at, look at those tomatoes on there. That makes me so happy. I've got some on uh, this side, on the west side, and I got some more on the east side. So it makes me so happy. And as I was saying, yes, the, I, I do think it would look better without the peppers there. And they are kind of overpowering it. They're tall, turning out to be taller than I expected. But remember, I don't have an edible garden in the back yet, other than in a few pots. So these are just going to stay because they're serving my purpose, which is to produce. And you can see that there are all sorts of jalapenos on there. And in fact, after I shoot this, I am going to harvest them. There's some on both sides. So I will pluck those little darlings and bring them in. You can see some hiding in there. And then over here, this tomato on this side is also, fortunately, these set fruit before it got too hot. You can see some down in there. And I have been, I, I have really been cutting on this tomato. So if, if any foliage looks like I don't like where it is, I just cut it off so that it matches um, the contours and the draping effect that I want in the window box. But this scaviola here, this fan flower, which is repeated down here, this is one of my favorite effects, is repeated down here in this pot, is performing just brilliantly in the sun, full sun. Now, as always happens after the construction of the window box and the expansion of joints and things a little bit, there's some paint touch-up that we need to do in the corners and, and we shall do that. But it's not only beautiful from the outside, it's really wonderful from the inside when I'm in my bathroom during the day. And I guess I need to do a little bathroom update because I forgot to show you a couple of the bathrooms in the cottage tour. But I will do that. Then look here, I was wondering what this was, but this is another huge asparagus fern branch getting ready to fill out. I cut it back, as you recall, pretty hard and I continue to pinch the pineapple guava. I also continue to pinch it back because I want it to thicken up. But I do love that gray green. And I love the way that you can kind of glimpse behind it. Things that are growing in the background and then it still gives space for underplanting in the front. Those are pink pentas. Also, just that dusty miller. I also keep pinching it back because I want it to get very, very bushy. Look at that, look at that fun retro, it's on its side, but that fun retro lawn chair that we took to a picnic in our, our park yesterday. Now I did, I did something but first, appreciate this, this pot right here is especially attractive to swallowtail butterflies. I don't know if it's obviously it's the plants, but it must also be its location because there have been so many gorgeous swallowtails on this. One thing I did, and I'll explain it a little bit further later, probably in a separate video, but you'll notice that the furniture on the front porch is subtly different. It is the other Smith & Hawken wood furniture that I had in the back, and it is it has replaced the other furniture that wasn't, it, it, it just didn't hold up as well, though I love the look of it. And those two chairs have gone over to live at the neighbors right there, and I think they look kind of cute there. And, and 
just in my defense, normally my hose is put up, but I'm getting ready to do my container watering for this morning. And this time of year, yes, I do water the containers every morning because while a lot of them have drip irrigation, some of them do not. So I wanna work my way back down to the front because I wanna show you something. My pots here, I'm really pleased with the way they look. Love, love, love the brick. So let me see if I can do this and navigate these stairs without falling on my face. There's also people driving by, so I'm trying to stay focused here. The grass is in need of mowing, but look how beautifully it's filled in. But here's where I wanted to show you, what I wanted to show you. Some of you had noticed that, no, my path, my walk is not even. It is, it, it slopes to the east. That's just the way these old houses are. Um, they're not perfect. I don't want them to be perfect. And it in no way seems to be an impediment to people visiting me. So I'm not worried about it. And see the grass on this side is also filled in. We got some rain, but it's it's starting to brown some with the intense southern sun. But here's here's really why I I kind of came down here. Let me zoom out for a moment. It always changes the audio when I do that. But a number of you have commented that the flower bed to the right of the steps was not the same dimensions as they were to the left. So with my, my new root slayer and my edger, that's something that I, I, you can't notice as much probably when you're looking at it directly as you guys could notice in, in images on camera, but I did make a very slight modification to the left side. It's not completely identical, but for the most part it is. It was measured and it's just the way the edge looks right now. The, I love the way the roses look, but they're, they're, I've had to deadhead them pretty much already so fairly in fairly short order they won't be putting out it's supposed to get as i said in the hundreds next week and they're not going to be putting out putting out too many more blooms and when they do the blooms will quickly quickly kind of fry thank you so much you guys for suggesting that i get a gray umbrella instead of the tan one which went to live in the back because it does look so much more unified with the rest of the space. So I'm going to come over here and show you what it looks like if you're walking down the sidewalk, what it looks like from an angle and what my neighbors see when they walk by. And this is the approach the view they get when they're walking from that side in the sidewalk. And then let me see if I can do this without making you nauseous. Move to the other side rather slowly. And the upper terrace, you know, the things, it's symmetrical, but it's asymmetrical <laughs> uh, symmetry, I guess, because the plantings are not the same. And I didn't want them to be the same. And I think it's very effective, but I think the color palette looks great. and is fairly consistent across the space. Now it starts to change at Autumn's Edge, but I like that. We've got some morning walkers. Gotta get out early. And yes, I am anxious to get some shade up here. Some of you were commenting that that tree right there, that red, red bud by that holly, you thought maybe it was dying. It's not dying. It's actually doing very well. Those are just some of the seed heads 
that have browned and they just haven't fallen off yet. Fortunately, these red buds bloomed profusely this spring. And because of that now, I'm getting the seed heads. So that gives you kind of an overall image of the new garden at the Cottage on the Hill. And I hope you enjoyed it today. Happy summer solstice.